Hello, this is David D. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world that have been working for decades outside the mainstream who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure to click on that subscribe button below and that little bell next to it, and we will alert you when a next our next video drops and we're going to talk today about something that's very near and dear to my heart my father's heart and that is what is a kilogram now you may think oh who cares but in reality that's a huge problem and not only that our current models have problems so imagine all that compounding when we're just trying to do something as simple as a kilogram and of course that makes a big difference because if you're doing science and engineering a kilogram standard is very important if you are doling out fuel for uh, something and you are m measuring that in super small amounts you got to get your calculations right and if it's all based on the kilogram and that thing is changing which it is then we need to have a better standard and of course we're going to talk about this with a point of view that is one of a critical thinker in this case myself David D. Hilster who happens to have uh, his own model that he's working with, working with on and it's a Newtonian model for everything so we, we pretty much have no choice but to give everything a physicality and I mean real physicality and you're gonna get my point of view on this so yes this isn't gonna be someone else's point of view necessarily but of course we stand on the shoulder of giants so our model stands on the shoulder of giants for instance Glenn Borkert's in, work on infinity you know, Nell Deneu's work as underwater experiments, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really interesting to give you something you'll not see anywhere else. They all talk about the mass and how kilogram mass and, and how interesting just that story is. But the science behind it, they talk about it, but we have a different perspective. And here it is. Scientists are about to change what a kilogram is. That's mass. Of course, this is a, a journalistic uh, embellishment so it sounds really interesting well what do they have here this is the Kimball balance and they're going I will be telling you about the Kimball balance that's why they have a picture of this here so let's let's go on and look in fact here is the uh, La Grande K I don't know how they say K in French so I apologize to all those people who are fluent in French but in, in this you see in a jar in a jar in a jar there's this kilogram the cylinder which is the kilogram kilogram mass and they up that's a picture of it and uh, Pratt and his colleague colleagues at Inist are part of an international effort to redefine the kilogram based on fundamental universal constant a physical quantity in nature like the speed of light or the electric charge of a proton that never changes regardless of when or where you are you know what I'm gonna say well I'm gonna say it and that is first of all there are the physical constant light is not constant outside the mainstream many of us including oh, here it is Einstein's lost, lost key this is uh, Alexander Unsaker who yes I'm setting up it's just hard for us it's gonna be this year uh, that we'll have an interview but he talks about how light speed isn't a constant in fact Einstein's lost key has very much to do with that and of the electric charge of a proton now, if you look at our model, there's no such thing as charge. Charge is what we call a convenient plus and minus that we put on things that show repel repulsion and, uh, or attraction. And that to us in our model has to have a physicality to it. So that's sort of weird. The actual actuality in our, I'll give you an example, in our particle model, electric charge, what brings electric charge and the, of the proton and electron, all those things together, is the G2 particle. It's gravity one level down. So it's getting weird. In our, so these kinds of things are not so clear. But what we can say is, first of all, the charge of, electron, of a proton, it's not constant. You know why it's not constant as well? Because every electron is different. We stand on the shoulders of Glenn Borker, who says every particle in the universe is unique. It's not exactly the same ever. So if we're basing this on the speed of light, which isn't a constant, maybe we can get an average for it, or electric charge of a proton, and protons are all different, if you believe they're protons, or at least nucleons. And they say that never these things never change regardless of when or where you are. 
problem is they themselves are not constant. So they're basing all this stuff on things that according to many of us outside the mainstream are in fact not identical. Not good. Here's the problem with the current standard kilogram. It's losing weight. It's now ever so slightly lighter than the identical than the once identical witness cylinders stored in labs around the world. Scientists don't know whether the BIPM prototype is losing mass, perhaps because of loss of impurities in metal, or if the witnesses are gaining mass. What does this mean? They have one kilogram standard, and then they have one other ones around the world. And there's a difference between them. Now, uh, those of us outside mainstream know that one of the natural processes of our universe in our unicosm, as we call it with Glenn Borchardt's system, which I like to use because he's already set up a system, the world around us, that there is mass increase, that mass is increasing. You notice how our noses and ears grow with time? No, I'm kidding. It's a joke. Yes, don't sit down there below and think I'm some simple. No, that was just a joke. But in reality, we outside the mainstream think that, like in the particle model, particles can hit each other, particles can be captured, or particles can go through without hitting anything. So mass increase is going to be a part, and according to us, of the G1 particle gravity model. So kilogram, these things are going to gain weight. Maybe the other ones are gaining weight. Regardless, yes, there are contaminations. And yes, I understand all that. Yes, I read the article. Yes, I know. They, that's why they keep it in under, underneath all of those jars. Yes, I do. But from outside of mainstream, we know that mass increase is part of it. Now, of course, everything else is gaining mass. So, well, you get the story. It ain't so easy. Let us keep going. If that seems of a lot of uproar over an infinitesimal change in mass of an object, consider this. The effectiveness of filters on diesel engines is determined by measuring the mass of the soot they capture in micrograms. Again, remember I was saying that this is really important because these standards are used and these standards are made calculations. And money, oh, when it involves money or fame or power, people are interested. In 2014, at the Quadrennial General Conference on Weights and Measurements, yep, that's a thing, the scientific community resolved to redefine the, com uh, the kilogram based on Planck's constant, a value from quantum mechanics that describes the packets of energy come, uh, that describes the packets energy comes in. If physicists can get a good enough measure of Planck's constant, the, the committee would calculate a kilogram from that value. Same problem, folks. Look at this. Packets of energy. First of all, energy is a concept. It ain't real. And so the way they measure this, you'll see, I, they basically use an electric field, blah, 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 blah. But my goodness, they don't have, they don't have physicality for any of that, so what are they going to... It's really hard. But the idea is that if you just read this, packets of energy is not a really good way of doing calculations for a constant, given that energy is sort of a concept. And yes, they will do their calculations for it. And quantum mechanics, of course, is a mess. Quantum mechanics in general means the really small stuff that's going on inside of like uh, inside an atom. atom. So yeah, they're going to do it on Planck's constant. Again, is it a constant? No. Why? It's going to be an average because things are going to have the average size. Everything is different. So no matter what they're measuring with, what again, whatever they're doing, go back to what Borker says. Any particle, there is never, you can never find an identical particle. And that's why even in an infinite universe, you're not going to have copies of yourself. You're going to have a thing that's really close, but you'll never find a copy of yourself somewhere else in the universe. It's all unique. So that's pretty good philosophically. Let's keep going. They're using a Kimball balance. Instead of balancing the scale with weights, Pratt and his colleagues use electromagnetism. That's interesting. They don't have a model for it. But they're using it. An electrical current is sent through a coiled wire to generate a magnetic field that creates an upward force needed to balance the scale. Scientists can figure out the strength of that field by pulling on the coil. If you know the voltage, the current and velocity at that at that coil will be pulled. You can calculate the Planck constant with an extreme with extreme precision. Precision. Same problems. Same problems. 
Let's keep going. I don't want to harp on this. The Weights and Measures Committee will meet this month to establish a value for Planck's constant by averaging the values calculated at NIST and other labs. There you go. You're already averaging. So they'll get it within, uh, you know, uh, their idea is to have, you know, the idea is okay, folks. I'm not criticizing the idea. The problem is, is the, the standard model of what we're using and all this stuff isn't understood. This is just sort of engineering problems with, you know, the general calculations with not knowing things like, well, mass increase is, is part of the natural process in our unicosm where we are. Um, there's infinite levels down. The there's no two particles that are the same. So the idea of a constant is not constant. They all this stuff. So at least they're, they're going to try to averaging and all that. That's the idea. I can't stress. <laughs> here we go. I can't stress enough how impressed I am at humanity for being able to pull this stuff off. Patting yourself on the back. Don't break my my uh, mom always said. Don't break your arm. Patting yourself on the back. Well, as I said, you know, let's let's just summarize this. You know, today is not going to be a long session because I think uh, you get the idea. But I wanted to go through an article and why this is really hard. Let's look at it from the perspective of we critical thinkers. There are no constants. Why? Because Borker it says every atom, every molecule, every G1 particle, every electron, proton, whatever you want to call it. Even their invented things that don't exist, like neutrinos, whatever it is, none of them are the same. No two are the same. So there are no constants. We can just get averages. That's the best we're going to do forever. No two particles are identical. Of course, that's, that's why. We can only average them. Yep, that's why I said. No comprehensive model to allow us to improve our standards. Uh, a model like my father and I, you know, maybe we'll be able to come up with a way that's way better to come up with a standard. Oh, no, dad, 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 don't, dad. Dad, don't do it. I can hear my dad's brain going. He's going to be up all night. The next thing you're new is going to be on his channel, which you should subscribe to. Um, the uh, channel, which is, of course, Particle Guru. Just go to YouTube.Particle.Guru. You're there. Dad has a great channel. But Dad, hey, hey uh, yeah, we could use our model to try to define these constants because we have a comprehensive model and physical model for everything. Who knows? And mass increase, increase is uh, increase is part of nature, of course. That makes everything puts a monkey wrench into everything. But you know those are the real problems we have, and why we outside the mainstream really look at this very different. And of course, this is my opinion. If I go to the conference and someone say, "I saw your your video, David, on dissident science," and I disagree with it, that's what this is all about. The difference is that our conference we allow harmonious disagreement. We allow three or four models for the same thing. And that's what we need in science. We do it in business. We do it in law. We do it with software. We do it with even human language because there are lots of different ones. And we seem to get along most of the time. But in science, go to your teacher at the physics in physics at the university and say, Hey, I want to write my thesis on the particle model applied to electronics. <laughs> so, anyways, don't take my word for anybody else's. Don't take anyone's word on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I am Dave D. Hilser. Remember to subscribe below, hit that little button, and the little bell. Ciao for now.